Well hello everyone and welcome back to Shutters and Speed. We've, uh, you're joining me here on a uh, lovely spring evening in, at the end of May. Um, finally we've got some really nice weather to ride in. Um, it's been a little bit of a disappointing season so far for motorcyclists I feel. It's been a bit wet, windy and cold. Uh, but we've got a lovely evening ahead of us hopefully. Um, and we're heading out to Old Buckingham for for their two wheel Tuesday so we've got a lot to talk about apart from that so as we say here in Norfolk let's run them their titles boy yeah so welcome back to Shutters and Speed yeah today we're uh, heading towards or well, this evening sorry we're heading towards Alt, the village of Old Buckingham for their two wheel Tuesday um, but before we uh, go into that, I just thought I'd like to go through um, the satellite navigation system that I'm using. Now some of you may well have seen the Ottercast system uh, review or preview that I did um, a few weeks ago. Um, and if you haven't seen that video, then a link to that will appear up here somewhere at some point. Um, and hopefully you'll go and have a look at that. Um, but the system is now here up and running and I'm using it this evening to find Old Buckingham. I've not actually been there before so obviously we need to uh, find our way there um, and that's what we're, we're trying to do. Now if you've watched that first video you'll notice that the satellite navigation system is actually mounted slightly differently to where I thought it would be. I did have a unit um, made or had sent to me that would fit on this section here um, but uh, I found that not to be quite so good. Um, it was obstructing my instruments quite a lot um, and so I opted back for the sort of TomTom -tom system that I've got here um, which I've incorporated to use this and I'm actually very happy with it. The view at, I, mean, I don't know whether you can see on the video but I can see the screen quite clearly um, and it's all working very well so far. So you know that's, uh, that's a bit of an update for that. And what we'll do now is we'll just head back to the studio for a few minutes uh, so that we can have a look at the route and how the system works on the desktop at home and how you can then um, transfer that, um, that uh, route to the system here. And that's the route we're now following. So uh, we'll go back to the studio and have a look and then you'll join me back on the road. Okay, so here we are back at the old studio and we're just going to open up the CD app. Um, we're going to enlarge it so it fills the screen so that we can see where we're going and we're going to go down to the bottom here to where it says where to and we hit that um, and then I've already got the uh, postcode for the area where we're going which is obviously Old Buckingham so I will click on that and that will give us a rough route from Downham Market to Old Buckingham as you can see hopefully on the screen here. Um, I'm going to just alter that slightly and I'm going to go down here to the to the um, routing option shall we say and I'm going to go from balanced to fast curvy and what that will do when we generate that route is that it will actually uh, create a, a, a route whereby we take a bit of a backcountry road through here we go from down the market here and we follow the road to Crimplesham through to Wearham on the A134 we carry on on the A134 to Munford basically then from Munford to Thetford whereas normally if you was heading that way you would probably go all the way to the outskirts of Thetford and get onto the A11 which is the uh, main road but in this particular case what we're going to do is we're going to get go cross country through some lovely forestry uh, routes um, and then we're going to follow our way back onto the A11 for a short period and then up through here to Snetterton village and into Old Buckingham that way. So hopefully you can see the route on there, and that's the route we, we are following. Um, and you can see it quite clearly here on the screen. So let's go back to the ride and see how we progress. Yeah, so uh, we're back on the road again, and we're just um, approaching the village of Whittington, um, and we're heading up towards Thetford on the A134 at the moment. Um, so we're going to go to the Two Wheel Tuesday bike meet. Never been before, so uh, obviously I'm not quite sure what's going to happen. I've been speaking to one or two people in recent days about it, so I thought it might be worth a look. Um, I've got various uh, bits of kit with me, so we'll uh, have a look around 
maybe have a chat with one or two people this time if they are amenable to that of course um, about what bikes they've come on if they're of interest to me and I hope also obviously if they're interest to me they're of interest to you too but we won't know how things will pan out until we get there but uh, I've already seen two or three bikes um, out and I guess they're heading that way yes yeah, so uh, we're making our way along the A134 as we said earlier and um, I've uh, actually covered this route in part um, in recent in another video that I did um, and I just love this section here this wide open I hope the camera is sort of giving you it uh, in its, all its glory but it's a wide open very fast piece of road um, which is uh, just a ticket and it, <laughs> we're able to enjoy it at the moment in this on a mid-afternoon on Tuesday uh, on a Tuesday and uh, it's uh, relatively traffic free at the moment which is great we also uh, regular viewers will also know that um, usually when I go out for a ride I'm out early in the morning so that I can avoid the traffic um, but obviously when you go out in the evening you've got to uh, put up with that but we're doing quite well at the moment so that's great yeah just uh, so we'll just have a quick word about this the satellite navigation system I'm using here um, it's called scenic um, and it is uh, something pretty new to me um, and as I mentioned in the introductory video um, I'm looking to do a few rides this summer which are routes that the the editorial team of ride magazine have used um, or been on and uh, made available to us to download and use and so and the system seems to be able to cope with that very well um, and so uh, before we actually go on a, a proper ride I thought I'd just test the system out on a short of a shorter spin as it were um, so that's also what we're doing this evening so this is a sort of two or threefold um, event if you like uh, video today yeah the one thing I have noticed so far with using this system is the is the speed limit warning um, it's very aware of what the speed limit is and if you veer over I've got it set to 10% over um, but it does give you a warning when you sort of veer over the uh, prevailing speed limit I mean, we're now coming out of a 50 into a 60 so we're able to up the pace a little but um, I guess some people might find it a little bit annoying that it, it, it is constantly reminding you if you um, if you do uh, break the speed limit as it were and I know obviously when we're in when we're in the national speed limits um, you know the 60 miles an hour people tend to use that as a fun time but um, I'm being a good boy this evening and, and keeping as close to the limits as I can um, for the for the uh, <laughs> for the uh, use of this video as it were yes yeah, so we're now leaving the village of Munford and as we mentioned in a previous video we're now going through the tunnel of trees as it were this should be at its best right now um, we're in we're recording this in late May uh, the leaves are really starting to look fantastic um, and so it'll be interesting to see what it looks like but I think I mean it's a straight piece of road but the actual view so forth right running through these trees I think is really quite magical and I hope you're enjoying it one of the features of these um, uh, apps that you find that are motorcycle specific I mean this one is quite similar to several of the others like Kalimoto and so, and so forth um, but um, you can set it to different uh, parameters um, and you know you'll find you'll you'll get a different route to us to a familiar destination every time and this is uh, one of those situations I mean I think under normal circumstances you'd have carried on to Thetford and gone down the A11 which would probably be slightly quicker but uh, probably a bit more boring as this about this road you know sort of country B road through the trees here in Thetford Forest um, is really quite pleasant yeah the system I've, I've had the bike um, serviced today so hopefully <laughs> the bike will get us home uh, to Old Buckingham and back reliably um, a big shout out at this point to the chap who does my motorcycle uh, Sh uh, Sean Loveday from Paradise Garage in Downham Market um, and if you're a motorcyclist and you're in the, in my area um, he's well worth a look top chap 
does a great job at a very reasonable price. Can't recommend him highly enough. So uh, thanks very much, Sean, if you're watching. Uh, bike is running like a dream. Yeah, so uh, as part of the service today, he uh, he wired this in, in sort of a, in a more permanent fashion. Um, just see if we can whip by this. There we go. Lovely. Um, I had I did have it connected via a USB lead to the uh, to the socket, but um, I think a more permanent wired connection is probably more reliable, hopefully, and also more weatherproof because the whole system is designed to be weatherproof. So if you've got a if you've got a sort of a, a system that um, where the wiring is possibly open to the elements if you're on a long journey, and obviously that that could be a cause of failure. So um, you know he's very. He has very kindly, um, you know, uh, wired this in for me, so it's on a permanent, uh, permanent setup, so to speak. So that's great, and uh, it's all working fine. Yeah, the other reason um, why I had the system wired like it is now is because I did find on roads like this when I was done, done an initial test, um, I did find that the supply was a bit jiggly on these roads, um, and the system would cut in and out. Um, mainly because of a poor connection, I feel. So um, that's another reason why I've, um, you know, obviously opted to have the thing wired in permanently. Um, and it's all it's all proven to be quite good so far. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the cameras off for a little while, um, and then you'll join up with me as we ride into Old Buckingham for the Two Wheel Tuesday bike night. So here we are. We've arrived at the pretty village of. Old Buckham, and uh, looks as though we make our way down here into the uh, into the bike night itself. So let's go and see how we get on. Ah, oh, the Ox and Plough pub. This is where it's all happening. Looks like we're going to be marshalled in. All seems very convivial. Already a lot of bikes here, a lot of bikes. Well, we've arrived. Very nice man. Thank you very much. Very nice man provided a plank of wood for us to put the side stand down, and we're here. What a what a sight to see! What a sight to see! Right, we'll uh, get off, get ourselves sorted out, and go and have a wander around. Yeah, so here we are at uh, the Two Wheel Tuesday night, and I've just met up with my, a, a chap called John here, and he's got this uh, beautiful Kawasaki 500 that uh, we'll be having a look at in close detail in a moment. But in the meantime, uh, John has very kindly agreed to come on the channel and have a chat with us about the bike, its background, and so forth. So, John, uh, how, how did you come by it in the first place? Uh, that was my mate's mate who had it, and he'd had it in his uh, shed since the 90s. And so uh, he was looking to sell it, but that took me five years to sort of basically get it off him. Okay. And in that price, in that time, the price had sort of gone up a bit as well. Yeah. All oh, right. Because <laughs> they've been rocketing. They have. Well, I mean, I have seen one of these, um, you know, in as good as nick as that, maybe a bit better, and they're ten grand. So yeah. They're a lot of money, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what have you done to it since you've had it? Well, when I first got it, obviously that was standing since the 90s that one of the original paint uh -huh. basically been neglected but I thought I'll just see if I can get it going first yeah. so uh, yeah I managed to start it and that didn't seem too bad and the chap had said that I had the crank done right uh, back in the day and 
sort of I had the heads and everything off and which that I had. And so it was a matter of stripping it right out and getting the prime powder coated and re-sprayed and sort of general and new forks because uh, they were quite badly pitted and new shocks and the uh, rims managed to clean up all right so I was basically was doing that on a cost so I didn't go sort of mad with it. Uh, the exhausts were quite badly pitted but I managed to get a set of expansion chambers, I don't quite know what they are but um, sort of period from the time I think they are from the 70s and uh, which fitted perfectly so uh, that's what we put on, obviously new tyres and everything else, brakes and uh, sort of plated lots of bits and pieces and just went through it all and uh, there it is on the road. Uh, brilliant, well thank you very much for having a brief chat with us about it and uh, we'll just have a, a bit of a close look round yeah. it if that's okay. Yeah. Yeah, so we're being very fortunate this evening where there's people extremely willing to have a chat with me about their bikes and Barry here is no exception. He's got this beautiful old Kawasaki 750 triple here um, and he's kindly come on here to have a chat with us about it. So uh, Barry, uh, can you tell me how you first acquired this? And I know there's a bit of a story behind it so I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to hold this pretty steady while you uh, give it the big one as it were. So uh, off yeah. you go. Well basically at the time I was running an old Triumph about 20 years old and it was having problems so I decided I'd get something what would be reliable. I was looking for a Suzuki funnily enough, the water-cooled two-stroke mm -hmm. and a friend of mine had this which at the time was non-running and he'd, that was say two years, ten months old, he'd had it from new and persuaded me to buy it basically <laughs> and so I bought it, had it fixed and here we are sort of 46 years later and I've still got it. So um, what what uh, have you sort of done to it? anything particular or have you uh, just maintained it or? I, I haven't mean, done any serious maintenance other than replacing anything that breaks uh -huh, uh -huh. since about the winter of 8081. Wow. Yeah. That, at that point, that's when it was painted blue, it was originally gold. Yeah. Yeah. And at that time I had the engine down and did the small ends because they were rattling. Uh -huh. But the engine hasn't really been touched since and the paintwork is the paintwork that was done in somebody's garden shed back in the wow. winter of 80, wow. 80 81 that, so yeah. he obviously made a fairly decent job of it yeah so the engine then as a you know you said you mentioned a sort of was it a bottom end rebuild i guess no, top end top really, end rebuild yeah. yeah yeah but how many miles have you done on it not that many because um if you look at the speeder it's on 30 something thousand that they're actually kilometers right okay but that is one of eight bikes i own right yeah so so would you say it's the one you use the most out of the ones that you've got? Um, probably not quite. No, no, it was at one point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but since I've bought a few others, I probably tend to use some of my smaller British boats more often yeah. than I use this. I mean, this is the first time in three weeks right. that I've had it out. Yeah. I've been using my little 1939 BSA and my 1960 Norton. Right. More, more regular at the moment okay. recently. Yeah, okay. But I do try and ride it often if I can because it's fun. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, because it, 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 there's a definite trend nowadays towards towards this type of thing, which looks used. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Well, Rather, uh, you know, there used to be a time when everything had to be not bolt perfect, 
Um, but you know, it's great to see something like this that has been ridden like you've had and owned it as long as you have, um, and yet it's still in good usable condition, which is well, fantastic to see. Yeah, I mean, this is the thing. A lot of people look at it and they remark on how it's nice to see one that yes. hasn't been fully yes. restored, yes. which yes. is why I tend not to do too much to it, uh -huh. apart from replace. Yeah. I mean, for instance. The throttle cables and things like that are still the originals. Really? Yeah. The, it's only last year I put a first put clutch cable on it from new. Wow. You know, so it's what about chains and sprockets? How quickly does it rip through? About there? one set of sprockets and two chains, I think. Okay. Okay. Well, we're going to have to cut it short there, Barry, because we're, there's a black man here waiting to get out. Um, but thank you so much for coming on, and uh, we'll have a close look at it. Right, so I'm joined by my Mick. good friend Mick here, who has got this beautiful uh, Katana 1100? 1100. 1100. And uh, he's very kindly agreed to have a little chat with us about it and uh, how he acquired it and so forth. So over to you, Mick. So the first question, I guess, is how did you acquire this and, and when did you get it? About 15 years ago. Yeah. I bought it from a skip, skip bloke. He had a skip company. Uh huh. And he didn't want to ride it anymore. So I bought it off him and I've had it ever since. Fantastic. And what have you done to it since you've had it? Just a new head gasket, new exhaust system, and that's about it. Yeah. But I'm now acquiring all the bits to do a full rebuild in the winter. Fantastic, yeah. You mentioned earlier when we was off camera about the exhaust system. What's yeah. the story behind that? Nick Pavarani in Attleborough, yeah. he made all the four into two collectors. Uh-huh. He done all them and they're done still silences. And he done what I wanted. Yeah. I wanted them swept up and swept out. So from the back end, fantastic. What we had in the seven. Yeah. Oh right. Okay. So the, you mentioned earlier about some bits going on. So what are the plans in the future? Oh, it's going to be a repaint of the frame. Right. I might even get it nickel plated and then re repaint and refairings. Yeah. Because they've had it now. They're all cracked up. So okay. yeah. Okay. And I'm yeah. just. I'm going to redo the forks because the anti dives are on their last legs. Oh right, okay. So yeah, I mean, you know, the, the, I think the trend at the moment is to sort of is going away from sort of concourse condition um, to this sort of. I use it all the time. Yeah, usable sort of condition. Yeah. Which I used to drag race it. Did you really? Down, go down to North Weald. Right, okay. Next to Harlow. Yeah. Go down to North Weald, and it, on a good day, I'm doing 112 at 11 and a half seconds. Are you really? Yeah. Well, that's not bad by any stretch. No, Not I put it sideways a couple of times, <laughs> but never fell off it. Okay. Well, thank you very much for having a quick chat with us about it, and uh, well, I'm sure the viewers will enjoy uh, looking at your bike.
Old Buckingham off the green and uh, it's been a superb night I have to say met some wonderful people and uh, a well worthwhile trip well, we're making our way out of Old Buckingham now heading heading home with band as it were and it's been a fabulous evening we've spent um, a, a good two or three hours wandering around looking at plenty of motorcycles from every era every type it's been fantastic um, and I'd also like to thank the people who've taken the trouble to be interviewed on the channel um, and I hope that you've enjoyed their input which I'm sure has been very informative and interesting so as we make our way home I think we'll call a halt to proceedings here and now so this is Shutters and Speed signing off and we'll see you in the next video Bye!